Good morning, space fans! You are looking at an Atlas 421 at Slick 41 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. That's because we have a rocket that is ready to go to launch Spurs. Can I, can I call it Spurs? Spurs Geo 6 satellite into space, which is a, a missile defense satellite. It tracks infrared so that we can know when potentially bad things are happening but uh yeah that's what we're doing today slick 41 cape canaveral things are going to space let's do this everybody of course as always i'm joined by our incredible team of commentators and photographers and what have you's first up on the list joining us tonight for the fun is alejandro alejandro what's up buddy well hello everyone <laughs> Well, it, it is the morning here, and I guess it's also out there in Florida. Uh, we should expect some interesting lightning today, perhaps, on today's launch. I'm okay. I'm, I'm fine. Just, you know, a little bit excited. About... Some interesting lightning or some interesting lighting? Yeah. I didn't quite hear you there. Uh, yeah, lighting. That, that's, that, that's the word. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Because it's, it's going to launch Not like... lightning. The, the yeah. opening of the window is just before sunrise. So if it launches at yep. the opening of the window... Maybe jellyfish is is the summary there, right? Yep. There you go. You have it. <laughs> cool. And also joining us on the stream and out there in the field, ready to cover this launch, is the famous Julia Bergeron. Julia, what's up? Well, good morning, Jack. I'm famous. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, I'm super excited for today because. So are you are you on comms, good buddy? I sure am. Thanks for joining us this morning, Jack, and thank everyone for tuning in. We are, me and Julia and Stephen Marr as well, are all out here at the Space Force Station for today's launch. And yeah, it's a beautiful morning. Hoping for some uh, potential jellyfish effect would definitely be pretty cool uh, for the launch of Sippers Geo 6. Yes, that's how it's actually pronounced, turns out. Okay, so it is Sibbers. I, I'm Thank you for that. Yeah, let's uh, let's do this. Let's launch some stuff into space and some some important infrared tracking satellite stuff, no less, too. Um, okay, so again, this is a has a potential to be a pre sunrise launch. The window is a forty minute long window. If it launches at the beginning of the window, then uh, maybe we'll get some interesting lighting effects, as Alejandro was saying. I, I know the stream went down for a second. We should be back. Um, hopefully, you didn't miss. Okay, well, tell us what you missed, and we'll we'll repeat it. How about that? <laughs> it's, like, raise, it's like raise your hand if you're not here. Um, cool. So as usual, we do the interactive thing with our streams. So if you have any questions, please feel free. Type it on into chat. Type at NASA Spaceflight so the question will pop up into chat and in some software that Michael wrote. Speaking of Michael, that is uh, the, another member of our team tonight. He's doing he's being the live stream director for tonight's launch and uh, can't. I'd be remiss if I did not mention him. Also out in the field, we have Stephen, uh, Stephen Marr, but he will not be on comms. So that is the crew that you are dealing with tonight or this morning or whatever time it is for you around the world. But yeah, we've got an Atlas. It's got a four meter fairing. It's sitting on the pad at Slick 41. Let's get right into y'all's questions. How about, how about that? Yeah, sounds good. Let's do it. Yeah, bring it um, on. Okay. Who has a link to the lightning tower video? <laughs> because right off the bat, the first question is, what are these four towers for? Oh, uh, I, can do that. I believe well, there's a chat command now. Is oh, it exclamation yeah. Point towers? <laughs> nice. There yeah, okay, so I'm not even going to tell you. It's like a secret thing if you don't actually know. But we have a video about the four towers. It just came out. We hope you guys enjoy it. Um, okay, fine, I'll tell you. They're for lightning protection. <clears throat> but you have to watch the video to find out how they work and why they work. But yeah, don't forget, ask the questions, ask away. Um, but while we wait for some of y'all's great questions to come in, Thomas, you want to give us an overview of what's going on with Sibbers Geo 6? This is the last one of these that's going up, right? 
It sure is. So Sibbers is a constellation of infrared uh, missile warning satellites, like Mike, uh, Jack mentioned. Um, they're going up the GEO in the name indicates they're going to geostationary orbit. Um, and this will be the sixth and final one for this, uh, basically this constellation. Um, in the coming years, the Space Force will have a next generation satellite system, a new constellation of satellites to have improved sensors and things like that. But this is the last of the current generation of satellite. Um, these satellites are used, like Jack said, to detect, uh, missile launches. Um, as far as in, uh, in order to support an early warning system. Um, and all of these Sibbers Geo satellites have launched on Atlas V rockets. Today it's launching on the Atlas V with the 4 to one configuration, which is, of course, the 4-meter diameter payload fairing. It's the kind of more pointy one where the Centaur is not within the payload fairing. You can see the Centaur stage below the payload fairing. Um, as opposed to the 500 series Atlas, we have the much bigger payload fairing. That actually encompasses both the payload and the Centaur upper stage. Um, so this is the 4-meter fairing. It's also the last flight of the 4-meter fairing from here in Florida. There is one more 4-meter mission from Vandenberg Space Force Base. Um, uh, that's debatable, Jack. <laughs> but uh, the uh, remaining Atlas V manifest, um, besides those, this mission and the Mandy, will be 5-meter payload fairings. Um, so Got that's it. the payload fairing, and then the, the two in the 421 config indicates the two solid rocket motors that are on Atlas V's the first stage. These, bo these boosters are GEM-63 motors from Northrop Grumman, and, uh, and then the one indicates the single Centaur, or the single engine on the Centaur upper stage. The engine on this stage is also noteworthy today. It is the oh, second ever this. flight of the RL-10C-1-1. <laughs> it is a long, drawn-out name for an engine, but that is the variant of the RL-10 engine being used today. The first time it ever flew was on the Sibbers Geo 5 mission, and you might remember that on that mission, uh, the onboard video showed that that engine was actually vibrating quite a lot during that flight, and it still performed nominally. It didn't affect the performance of the vehicle, but ULA did go into an investigation to figure out why it was vibrating more than they expected. Um, and on today's flight, even though it is still flying that variant, the the nozzle extension that usually goes with this variant of the engine is not being used. It's being used, a short, a shorter nozzle is being used, which I believe is to mitigate those vibration issues while they continue to work on that. Um, but it is still the Dash 1, Dash 1 variant of the RL-10C. This engine just, variant is the one that will eventually a, be used on Vulcan as well. Why not just call it a Dash 2? Like, why Dash 1? That's a great one? question, it, Jack. It, it, <laughs> physically, it physically hurts me. Like we, give, <laughs> we give SpaceX so, so much guff for, like, the Block 5 full thrust. Like, it's a meme. It's a full-on meme with, with SpaceX naming, and yet here we are. It's not, it's not just SpaceX. It's all, all companies can, uh, can do stupid names. Sure. Uh, we're an equal opportunity offender here. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so that's the uh, RL-10 engine on today's flight. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of your overview of the rocket. It'll be flying due east from Slick 41 here at Cape Canaveral because, like we said, it's going towards a geostationary orbit. It's not a direct geo insert. It will be a geostationary transfer orbit. Centaur will be doing three burns today. The first burn will get us into a low Earth orbit parking orbit. The second burn heads up, gets us towards a geostationary transfer orbit. And then there's also a third burn that will start to raise the perigee or the lowest point of that transfer orbit up a little bit. It's kind of a, ULA likes to call it like an advanced GTO or something like that, or basically it's just slightly closer to a GO than a standard geostationary transfer orbit, but it's not going all the way direct GO. Um, Got it. So there, there are three burns. Um, after the second one, I believe it's after the second one, there are two small secondary payloads, two small CubeSats that will also be deployed. Um, for the U.S. Space Force prior to the third burn and separation of Sibbers Geo-6. Um, I'm I glad think, that it's actually I think Sibbers. that covers the bases. I'm glad yeah. that it's actually because I'm like, I always, you know, okay, so here we go. This is also kind of the mission of callbacks. Uh, if you guys remember the last Atlas out of the Cape, uh, it was, it launched uh, WAFAV, which is the wide field of view. Um, Off. <laughs> yeah, I, I call it yeah. WAFAV. But like on this one, it's actually sanctioned. I can say Sibbers. Um, also on that previous launch, there was a test bed or a test IR sensor, if I'm not mistaken, which Thomas, you mentioned, you know, this is the last of the Sibbers and then mm -hmm. th there will be a next generation like follow up uh, in the coming years. And the on the previous Atlas out of the Cape, they actually launched a like one of the one of the things that they were testing was a uh, 
you know, a, a potential next generation sensor for this infrared uh, tracking. Holy cow, yep. Jerwa with a hundred dollars super chat. Thank you. It just says no comment too. Like Jerwa, you're giving me nothing to play with here. Um, <laughs> but but seriously, thank you for the incredible support for the channel. We could we couldn't do this stuff without you guys, and you know that. And I say that every time, but I mean it um, because it's true. We absolutely couldn't. So holy cow, there's nothing I there's nothing I can say that is worth a hundred dollars so I'll, I'll keep going on and streaming and we'll keep doing our thing and getting you all excited about today's launch so hopefully that's that's worth it for you but thank you buddy that's insane sorry thomas did i interrupt you uh nope i don't think so cool um hey alex yeah i think wide right i think thomas One of the... just said everything but he missed something well, I'm, I'm like all coffeeed up and just like talking over everybody here. So it's not your fault. Okay. It's my fault. Um, well, go ahead and say whatever you want to say. <laughs> well, we have a question here that's asking, what is the nickname of this Atlas? As we know, all uh, Atlas 5s <laughs> have like different nicknames in like internal ULA nicknames, right? Like there's like a slider and a bruiser and like they all have. So which one is, yep. uh, is the one that we're seeing today? This 421 config. Oh, you see, which one is the slider? It's the now four... that you... Okay. Four one one, okay. right? I think the four exactly. one one is the slider because it yep. has one yep. s. The, the the middle digit is SRB number, right? Yeah, it is the four one one and the Brucer that you also mentioned. That's the one with like all of the SRBs, right? Like the I forget how many. <laughs> five five one. That's the five 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 one configuration. And this one is the four two one configuration, and that is nicknamed the Twister. <laughs> so really the twister the twister it I actually had a different name before uh, i actually looked it up before i think it was the sprinter it was the the previous one that they had but it seems like they may have changed it uh, a little bit uh, after that but yeah <laughs> the twister I, I like sprinter way more than i like twister but all right i'll take it do, do, um here's another question are the srbs uh, symmetrical on this config, or are they kind of offset? Like, I, I, they look kind of offset, if I'm not mistaken. They are offset. Yeah, you're right. Uh, they are actually not well. Um, yeah, no, they, they are actually not 180 degrees apart from I, the diagram that I'm looking at. It bothers it's, me. It's not exactly 180 degrees, so it's a I, little I bit would, offset. I, I guess never that's why it's twister. Yeah, okay, I guess that makes sense. I would never make a rocket like that in Kerbal, unless I was deliberately trying to make something silly looking, but good thing is, <laughs> rocket science cares not for my stupid preferences. <clears throat> but you know what? What's I up, was Julia? Just thinking, I was just thinking of when we were out on the pad, I mean, visually, when you're standing there at the pad, it doesn't yeah. look like they're offset, so it must be oh. relatively small of an offset. All right, that makes sense. Um, oh, Julia, while you're here, um, as if you haven't been here, uh, which which barge is this first stage landing on? Ha <laughs> ha. Just kidding. <laughs> oh, um, there's no barge this morning, not for this launch. But if you tune into our next live stream, we can talk about that. Oh, I will be hosting well, that one, too. So, yeah, we'll, we'll okay. get into that. I, I, I will about point out something, hours. though. I will point out something. There's actually a barge. It's actually not a barge. In fact, like it's barge, not barge. It's actually a boat, which is a uh, rocket ship, which is ULA's boat that they use to transport uh, rocket stages and all of that for Atlas and Delta. And it's actually right now at Port Canaveral, if I remember correctly. And Gavin tweeted that yesterday, I think. So there you go. Well, there you go. And it does have a helipad on top and no rockets do not land on it. So, um, but I can tell you that the cruise ships should all be in port. So as far as a wayward boat goes, um, wayward giant ship, shall we say, <laughs> we should be safe from that. You read my mind. I was going to say wayward cruise ship is a little bit different than wayward boat. Uh, Paul Kelly in chat says the barge is called the North Atlantic, which I find unreasonably delightful. Um, cool. So keep asking y'all's questions. Let's see. Michael Will is saying, what causes the jellyfish effect? Alex, how about you uh, let us know? So what, we say jellyfish a lot of these times. and People might not know what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, well, so, you know, right now it is 
dark because it is during the night on the ground. But as the rocket goes up, it it encounters uh, the sunlight. That's not yet. That's gonna be whenever it launches at the beginning of the. Oh, there you go. It's it's sunrise. It's about to to come out the the sun, and and the thing is, it's still gonna be dark in the ground when this rocket lifts off at the beginning of the window. If it does or later, that's not gonna be a thing. Uh, but if if it launches at the beginning of the window, then it's gonna be dark on the ground. It's gonna be the sun is gonna be already illuminating the the rocket about I think about two minutes into flight should be more or less when it when it should happen. And the thing is, when the rocket goes up, the ex the expanding gases on the on the rocket engine basically expand because there's less pressure on the outside. And so what you see is some sort of like jellyfish effect on on like on the sky it's like this expanding gas it's like some kind of a star with with a spews like this sort of jellyfish thing and and it's amazing it's it's really beautiful yeah i think some of the coolest things i've ever seen in my entire life have been um launches with that effect and it's all because of the curvature of the earth right like the earth is not flat <laughs> and uh because of the curvature of the earth it's like the sun rises and we're in the shadow even though at, you know as you ascend at higher altitudes you ascend into the light um and that's what the rocket could do this morning in just about 22 minutes and 22 seconds haha <laughs> that's number wing so um, jack can i give like a disclaimer for you disclaim away usually if there's a jellyfish I make lots of kind of squeaky noises and oohs and ahs. So just fair warning to y'all joining us today. Perfectly acceptable. I think it was, <laughs> uh, I think it was Saucom um, out here from Vandenberg. And I may or may not have been on top of a mountain and I may or may not have been near a whole bunch of employees of a certain company with X in the name. And I may or may not have heard those employees <laughs> say many unspeakable things when it started to light up the sky. Uh, it is basically any reaction is acceptable when uh, when you see something like that with your own two eyes. So no uh, no worries, no disclaimer needed. Um, cool. So again, keep asking questions, everybody. We want to uh, go over all of this good stuff before we get to launch in about twenty one minutes. Um, I Thomas, go, were you about I go to say to... something? Oh, I feel like did I cut him I off? Think, I, I... I think Thomas is muted. Oh, no I worries. I, I wasn't going to say anything, but I can if you'd want me to. I mean, your voice <laughs> is just like smooth velvet. So yeah, tell me something. Um, <laughs> well, we can just say that we are on track for the opening of the window right now. Um, if you are actually, hold on, I got to do a quick check. Oh, nope, we got the overlay right. That's good. The, you'll notice that the overlay says L minus and not T minus. Um, the reason for that is because ULA's countdowns have, they're, they're not the same thing. The L minus time is the time until launch, but the T minus time, the time that's actually on the clocks, uh, is currently at T minus four minutes and holding. That is expected. Uh, we're in that last bit of hold. It will be released in time to launch for the opening of the window at 629 Eastern. And uh, as of right now, no issues being worked. Weather is green and the range is green. Um, so we are currently expecting an on-time liftoff today. So we have a question here from Fizz, which is kind of relevant. They're asking, does the launch window start in 20, well, they said 24, but it's now 20 minutes, or has it already started and it ends in that amount of time? It, that's, that's the start of the launch window, right? Yes, correct. The launch window opens or starts at 6.29 a.m. Eastern time. That's 10.29 UTC. And uh, the window extends for 40 minutes. So should any issues come up, they would have about 40 minutes to work that issue um, before they would have to call it off and come back for the backup attempt tomorrow. But like I said, right now, no issues being worked. Everything appears to be on track. Sweet. Um, let's see, really quickly, Starry, thank you for becoming a new member, the red team member. Um, Mr. Yib, also thank you for becoming a new red team member. And Stefan Batiste, that seems like a familiar name. What's up, Stefan? Becoming a Capcom member. Thank you so much to all of our new members. Stefan, at Capcom, you get Discord access, Capcom and above, actually. So pop into Discord and say, hey, I will send you my customary Forrest Gump waving gif. Um, I know, huge incentive. Jack T-Rex, thank you, good name. Uh, thank you for the support there. They say, down at Port Canaveral for my first Florida launch. Awesome, Jack. Hoping for a jellyfish for you. That was weird. 
talking to somebody with my same name. Fez, thank you for the support. They say double Centaur team. I guess the Centaur with the uh, with the two engines instead of the one, which is not what's launching today. Um, and nope, that'll this... only be Starliner and Vulcan. Yeah. Uh, oh God, I can't wait for Vulcan. I cannot wait for Vulcan. Um, calm, calm. Uh, the Just sandwich maker. <laughs> but I don't want to wait. Where's Where's the <laughs> Okay. Anyways, sandwich maker. Thank you for the support. They say with Dragon Trunk landing on Australia, can we now claim to be the newest SpaceX boat barge? <laughs> Oh, uh, ASDS Australia. Um, I like it. Let's see here. Demon Thompson is asking about the helicopter flying around just offshore at Slick 41. And if that's normal, that's completely normal. I feel like Julia is a good one for this because it's offshore, right? It is offshore. So you do see it um, in our screen occasionally. And that is another way that we help keep uh, our airspace as well as our water space clear of wayward boats and wayward planes. And what's really fun is if you happen to be out watching on the water, because that is possible during launches, um, if you get out early enough, um, you'll actually see the helicopter. They usually tend to fly a little low and wave to everybody on their way back. That's cool. Yeah, I remember, uh, you know, anytime I've been out at the Cape, it's kind of a, a, just a normal, a fixture. So nothing abnormal about that. Um, let's see here. I can Josh. add just a little bit oh, of please. extra context for today's launch, too. Uh, you may, if you've been following us on Twitter, you are probably aware that it's a pretty busy day planned today. It might be early, but we're actually already on the third orbital launch of the day as far as UTC time is concerned. Um, China successfully launched an orbital mission very early this morning, and then Rocket Lab had their successful mission for the National Reconnaissance Office this morning. Sibbers is the third. Um, we are expecting a New Shepard launch from Texas later today. Uh, Blue Origin will be live for that mission. There is a second Chinese launch planned for later today with a spooky experimental space plane, potentially. We'll talk more about that on nasaspaceflight.com. And the then experimental later tonight, stuff is the best. Yes, of course. And then to cap off the day, um, like Julia mentioned, we will be live later tonight, a SpaceX Falcon 9 launch from just over to our right, over at Pad 40. So uh, it's a busy day, and this is orbital launch 3 of 5 and total launch 3 of 6 for today. Could be exciting. I think maybe, I'm not sure about UTC time, but I think maybe 7 because there's, a, there's an ICBM test out of Vandenberg as well. Ooh, I missed that one. All right. Well, yeah, that'll be that'll add so that'll make two suborbital flights today then. Cool deal. It's a busy day. It's like we're in some kind of new space age or something. <laughs> um, let's see here. Bum bum bum. Oh, I was going to ask you. So, if this is Sibbers, what is the payload that the Falcon 9 is launching uh, later on? Is it Clippo or something? <laughs> Cuz it's KLP well, <laughs> <laughs> well, is it a K? Is Kiplo. it KP? It's KPLO, right? Kiplo. Okay, so Kiplo. Uh, if you were going to pronounce it, I guess you'd say Kiplo. I mean, they also gave it a, a more proper name called yeah, Denuri, Denuri. So that, yeah. that's what you would actually call it. Okay, fine. Uh, but that the Korean Polar Lunar Orbiter. I don't know. I haven't gotten that far in my Korean commentary Pathfinder preparation. Korean Lunar Orbit. That one. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Alex. Um, but oh, that's a with Korean the, with Lunar the Orbiter. Homework. So. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Oh, okay. Now we're, now we're getting photobombed by a ship again. <laughs> It better it better have passed in fifteen. I think at this rate it will have passed in fifteen minutes. But get out of there, MSC Davinia. Isn't that moving into port? Yeah. Yeah. I oh I lied. I guess all the cruise ships weren't quite in. But hey, Davinia's in now. Well, yeah, te technically, I think when you said that it was in, or, or you know, in the process of being in. We'll give you full. We'll give you still give you full marks. Uh oh. <laughs> It looks like uh, Chris B, NASA Spaceflight Actual, is in chat. Chris B, give us a poll uh, on what people think the best Atlas variant is or something. Or not variant, but uh, nickname. Or variant. I don't know. I, I'm not a fan of the... Though. I'm not a fan of the four-meter fairing. I gotta say, I'm just not... I know this is like the personal opinion. Who cares? Oh, but the, it looks so good. I mean, nothing does, against uh, the five-meter fairing, but the pointy rocket, pointy rocket, good. I mean, uh, I, you make oh, a Jack. really good case. Pointy Go rocket, ahead. good. I, I, I like it too. It, it's 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 a very photogenic fairing. 
Just okay, saying. that's that's really and flawless. It's got like logic. it's kind of got missile vibes to it, but like in a good way. Okay, yeah, like a non-kill missile missile. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will say that this particular four meter fairing looks the least worst. Uh, so if you read the article <laughs> about today's mission, you know that this is using the largest of the four meter fair. Like I didn't even know this somehow it flew above or below my radar. Um, Thomas, like what's the deal with, the, so within the four meter fairing, there are different sizes and within the five meter fairing, there's different, I, I somehow completely didn't know this. Right. Yeah. There are actually, there are technically six different Atlas V fairings, even though there's only four meter and five meter diameters. Each of the two diameters also has three different lengths or heights for the fairing. And today's flight is using the XEPF, which is the extra extended payload fairing. It's the <laughs> largest height fairing for the four meter diameter. Um, and that just, of course, that just depends on different um, payloads and how much, how much payload volume they need to fit inside the fairing. Um, but they, they, they look somewhat similar. But um, if you look closely between different launches, you can tell the difference. What's the hold on? So Chris B just put up a, a poll, <laughs> and there's I love twice this. a slider. You can tell <laughs> Chris B might be beast. a little bit sleepy because there are two there are two slider options. Do you want slider A or slider B? Um, yeah. now, uh, to be fair, there's the four one one and also the five one one. There are kind of two. It's like slider and big slider. Okay, yeah, fine. I guess jokes on jokes on us because yeah, Chris B was the, right the whole time. Yeah, there's the slider and the big slider. The four, the four one one and five one one. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, cool deal. Well, again, keep your questions coming. Uh, we will answer them as best we can. About twelve minutes to go. Uh, for the also, launch. Also, go ahead. I will say that the best nickname for the Atlas Five variants is the Bodyguard, which is the N two two variant that launches Starliner. That's my personal favorite. Uh, in terms of that's your favorite nickname or that's your oh yeah my favorite my favorite uh, nickname specifically okay okay i i mean bodyguard okay that's pretty cool but you cannot sing by whitney you can be my bodyguard no 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 no. (laughs) Uh, uh, copyright (laughs) (laughs) oh god now call me out stuck in my head um you know, I gotta say, I don't like the way the bodyguard looks, though. Like, cool name, terrible looking spacecraft. That's just me. Not that my my uh, disclaimer. My opinion matters not. Um, cool. So again, this is launching Sibbers Geo Six, uh, which is or is it Six Geo? Either way, it is the sixth and final space. Is that what it is? Space infrared uh, system, which is a basically space based infrared, infrared. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. It's 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 a missile detection and warning satellite, and it's a whole system. There are six in in one orbit. There are hosted thermal sensors or IR sensors on other payloads in elliptical or mol, mol, Molina. I just realized I've never said that word out. out loud. How do you say it? Molnia. Molnia. Okay. Wow. Uh, yeah. And that's and, and at least so, how I say it. I don't know if it's correct or yeah. Yeah, so there's a whole bunch of these sensors uh, in in different orbits, and we have, ideally, or in theory, full coverage all the time. And if a rocket launches, whether it's a, um, you know, mo- more short-range, like, theater-type uh, missile, or whether it's, you know, a full-on kill missile, like a, you know, a strategic, strategic nuclear missile or something like that, that plume that comes off that we're hoping gets illuminated by the sunrise this morning that plume is super hot and turns out easy to spot from space with the right sensors and so that's one of the ways in which we can tell um bad things might be about to happen and then you know launch things of our own to intercept the bad things that might be about to happen Uh, so that is what we are watching launch today is sibbers geo 6 and it's an Atlas 421, and it's Slick 41 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Base. So I think that's a nice little quickie recap. And oh, we've got a we've got a proper fixed poll again. Ooh, different options this time. I'm gonna go with Dominator. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, can I do a, a Falcon 9 plug here? Plug away. Because of oh, okay, so there's there's another sort of 
program going on on the Department of Defense Space Development Agency, which is sort of related with this, which is a constellation of satellites in low Earth orbit where they're going to have like different uh, capabilities and things like that. Like one of them is going to be a constellation of satellites, which is going to be for data transfer, internet and everything. That's probably going to be based on Starlink, but also there's going to be another set of satellites, which are going to be for tracking missile launches. But instead of being from geostationary orbit, like Cybers, it's going to be from low Earth orbit. And actually, the first 20 of these satellites, 10 for the ones that do all the data and internet and everything, and another 10 for the tracking satellites, they are actually called transport and tracking layers of that constellation. That's going to be launching next month from Vandenberg on a Falcon 9 rocket. So there you go. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, this is In stuff RTLS, that... by the way. Oh, this stuff fascinates me. I am absolutely captivated. Because if you think about it, like to intercept a ballistic missile or or, or something like that in in its any phase of flight, whether or not it's a it's you know in cruise phase or whatever, it's just like holy cow! I, I am not. <laughs> I am glad there are people much smarter than me that are working on such problems and uh, keeping people safe around the world. So it's it's absolutely crazy. And if you think about the like you said, there's going to be probably. Uh, a system that's sort of similar or based on or co-hosted with Starlink and, and doing this sort of stuff, it's like, holy cow. If you've ever read about um, Brilliant Pebbles, Google Wikipedia, Google Pe or Brilliant Pebbles later when you get a chance. It's like a crazy Star Wars, Reagan era proposed system. And it's like, oh, wow, we can actually kind of do something like that now. Um, it's the future. We live in the future. Mm -hmm. So you can see there the sun is rising which means maybe we'll get some cool lighting effects in about seven US minutes. Force Eastern Range. The vehicle system readiness poll includes electrical systems, hydraulics, pneumatics, propulsion systems, flight control, and propellants. Let's listen in as Ron McKee performs the final polling. Standing by for the go-no-go no go poll. Status check to proceed with terminal count. Atlas systems, propulsion. Go. Hydraulics. Go. Pneumatics. Go. LO2. Go. Water. Go. Centaur systems, propulsion. Go. Pneumatics. Go. LO2. Go. LH2. Go. S gas. Go. Electrical systems, airborne. Go. Ground. Go. Facility. Go. RFFTS. Go. Flight control. Go. GCQ. Go. Operation support. Go. Calm. Go. Umbilicals. Go. ECS. Go. Redline monitor. Go. Quality. Go. Op safety manager. Go. ULA safety officer. Go. Vehicle system engineer. Go. Anomaly chief. Go. Range coordinator. Clear to proceed. Launch director. Launch vehicle is ready to launch. Mission director. You have permission to launch. There you go. That is the Go No Go poll, and all stations have pulled Go for an on-time liftoff at 6:29 a.m. Eastern Time, 10:29 UTC of Atlas V with Cybers Geo Six. All systems are Go for launch. Excellent. Let me let me let you guys in on a little secret. I don't think I've ever said this before. Uh, every time I hear a Go No Go poll, which how cool is how cool are they? Come on. Every time I hear one, yeah. I like to pick the person who I feel like gave the best go or like had the best you know the the best you know the, you can just, i don't know every time i pick one person i'm like oh they win the they win the go no go poll that one i think the anomaly chief got it anomaly chief was like go like they i i felt that go <laughs> i like also, it also what a cool name anomaly chief i want to be an anomaly chief <laughs> um let's run through some questions really quick we got five minutes to go Amiga Clone is asking, where is the Centaur planned to re-enter? Do we know this? It's actually uh, planned to be left in orbit, if I remember yeah, correctly. Yeah, exa exactly. So on these missions that go out towards a geostationary orbit, or, or a geostationary transfer orbit in this case, the stage goes to too high of an orbit to uh, easily de-orbit and destruct re-enter. So instead, we utilize things called, they're called graveyard orbits. In this particular case, graveyard orbits are usually meant to describe um, an orbit that's just above geostationary orbit, and that's used for direct geo missions, or if a satellite that's in geo 
um, needs to be retired, they move it to a graveyard orbit. Um, but it will, it, you, the more generic term, I guess, is a disposal orbit. And it'll be left in a high orbit that doesn't fly near other spacecraft. It's not going to pose a risk to other missions in space. Um, and it will be um, acivated, I think is the right tense of that verb. Uh, basically, yep. all the excess propellant that is on board after the final burn will be vented, so it doesn't have a risk of like exploding down the line. Um, and it'll be left in a safe disposal orbit rather than... Um, it, so basically, it won't uh, do an uh, intentional reentry to a specific reentry point, but it also won't in the near future like uncontrollably rent or neither of those things are going to happen. It'll be in a stable, higher Earth orbit for many 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 years so it won't pose any risk to anyone here on the ground and it stays out of the way of operational missions as well unless the center upper stage blows up in orbit which has happened a couple of times but i believe we're already stages, at, yeah. yep i believe we're already on the final countdown uh t minus three minutes like this is actually t minus and not l minus although you know, Michael is still keeping L minus. It's also L minus. Oh, yeah, it's, 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 it's both. It's both. It's both. <laughs> it's squares and rectangles. <laughs> but yeah, there we you uh, go. so ULA after that go no go poll. Of course, at L minus four, they released the countdown hold. So both the T minus and L minus times are now just under three minutes to go. And like we said, everything is on track for an on-time liftoff. Three minutes to go. All right. Do you need to hop off comms and uh, situate the camera and get all happy and ready to go? You've got me for like 60 more seconds, Jack. So any last minute questions, go ahead. Okay. Uh, I am for Furniture is asking, how flexible do the different Atlas configurations allow for different payload deployments? I deliberately asked you a question that would take too long. Ha ha. No, no, you're good. Uh, basically, you have the different payload frames we talked about earlier. That obviously mostly just has to do with how physically big the satellite is. Um, but also you have the different number of boosters that you can add. And that is more a result of what orbit the spacecraft is going into and how heavy it is. Um, because the heavier the satellite or the higher it, uh, of an orbit it's going into, or the more energy that it needs, uh, the more boosters you need to add. And if you need more than three boosters, you will also need to go to the five meter payload fairing because of how the loads from those boosters get transferred to the rest of the vehicle um, they only fly up to three boosters with a four meter fairing and after that they go to the five meter even if you don't need the extra space so it's all about how big the payload is how heavy it is and where it's going now see now i feel bad for asking you a question with a long uh, a long answer but you did excellent so with that we'll let you uh, hop off comms and uh, get the camera ready to go good luck buddy <laughs> i didn't even say anything ice cold um Botch Do is asking, what's the flare for, which we just saw erupt <laughs> significantly? That's because Centaur yeah. uses hydrogen, right? That's a hydrogen flare? Yeah, oh. it is. And and actually, one of the reasons why it's flaring so much now is because they are they have stopped fueling the, the stages. They have stopped that. And so now they're training sort of the, the residual uh, hydrogen that there is on the lines going to the center and so now you see it's going a little bit back down that's sort of similar to falcon 9's when it is you know uh, venting from the strong bag and everything after fueling because it, it needs to be secured so that when the rocket lifts off all that plumbing just doesn't blow up with re remaining hydrogen and, and all of that so that's one of the ways that it uh, saves the the sort of connections to the rocket that's that's the idea here all right, well, we're about 30 seconds to go. I say about. We're exactly 30 seconds to go for liftoff of this Atlas 421 from Slick 41 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. And the mission, once again, is Sibbers Geo 6, which will be the last and final of these particular space-based infrared satellites that are used for missile early warning and detection. And poll is complete. The winner is the dominator of favorite Atlas 5 nickname. But here we go. Four, three two one that'll be ignition question mark further question marks there we oh, go there we go seems like and it was lift a off. Bit off there we go sibbers geo6 headed into space cleared the four towers and and it's off to the races we'll uh, I'll, I'll shut my mouth and we'll listen to the sound of the rocket
look at that. That is beautiful. Simply say, wow. It is now illuminated. Or about to be illuminated. No, you, you can see the body of the rocket. Is, it almost looks like it has sunset orange on it. Or mm. sunrise orange. You, we, we have a, a, a peachy pink and orange. I mean, yellow. It's like a rainbow, you all. Oh, that's so cool. I hope everybody that is out there in at the Cape and around Florida that is watching is getting an excellent show right now. It sure looks like they are. This is a gorgeous launch. So the rocket is through Max-Q. It is on its way into space. How long until Biko? We're at T plus 20, 20 seconds, 2 minutes, 20 seconds. Um, Alex, how long does the first stage burn? I believe it's about three minutes, three and a half minutes. Got it. And I don't know seeing... the exact number because I don't have it right in front of me, but I can find it. We should be seeing those uh, solids separate here. If we didn't already, I might have missed it, but... Oh, are we uh, are we getting some, some plume illumination going on here? This is gorgeous. We've gone from those more fiery colors to a bright, bright white with a little bit of blue. It's really pretty. Sounds jellyfishy. And what a track from Thomas, too. Way to go, Thomas. Yeah, it's amazing. I guess also the jellyfish helps a little bit to to be able to track it. Yeah, good point. <laughs> Jermaine, Jermaine in in chat says plumination, which I'm uh, now I'm knowing I'm going to repeat ad nauseum. <laughs> this is She'll be absolutely Pico. gorgeous. Which that's what ULA calls the first engine or first stage engine shut off is booster engine yeah. cut off. Pico. Look at that. That's gorgeous. Can see how oh, four plume... minutes. There you go. Oh, is four. that the, are those the SRBs? That was cool. See that? Mm. Yeah, those are the SRBs tumbling. Oh, that is such a cool shot. You can still see them that they are burning off, like the, yes, the now. That is so cool. Oh man! And there goes the exhaust plume. You can you can really visualize how as the vehicle ascends into thinner and thinner atmosphere and less and less pressure how that exhaust plume expands. It's, it's yeah. the best way to visualize it is these and types it, of launches. And it, it, and, and it looks pretty much like a, like a jellyfish. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. What a gorgeous launch. I'm floored. Oh, there you go. And there we go. Pico, stage separation, and... In just a RL couple seconds, engine. Centaur engine will start up. It's the RL-10C-1... Dash one. <laughs> there you go. So watch so you this nozzle. See... Yeah. This is a this is a slightly shorter version of the previous. This is, this is the second time the RL ten C one dash one is launched. The first time there was kind of some weird vibration going on, and I guess maybe ULA might not show it to us. Uh, Look at the but plume. yeah, they modified it a little bit, and hopefully that they did their homework, and that nozzle will perform as intended this time not that it didn't last time but you know and yeah sorry i talked over you alex but that plume shot was amazing yeah well i, I was saying uh I, I was hoping the the rl10 shot w was gonna be kept but no uh when the rl10 ignites you pretty much not notice that it is igniting because it's like a very clean hydrogen burn and and now yule is going to promo videos because that's how they do it <laughs> but yeah a little bit of, of a critic here but anyways um uh, yeah when when the rl thing is igniting it's like super clear like it's pretty like you don't notice the the engine is is igniting and the only thing that you can actually notice that the engine is igniting is when it starts up it's like it rattles and you can see that the engine like rattling and that's it and that's all you see and then it moves a little bit and things like that but it, it feels like it is stopped nothing is happening like the the engine doesn't go you know orange the there's no plume visible or anything like that and it was actually a recent launch they had a launch uh in the views or of the rl10 and you could see the, the the plume because it was like directly illuminated by the sun 
Like it was r right behind the engine. You can see in that light uh, light condition. That's when the only time that you were able to see it. It was like mind blowing. I, I don't know. Like these things of the of the exhaust of the engines and things like that. It amazes yeah. me. Yeah, it's super cool. Um, speaking of super cool, you know a super cool way y'all can support what we do? It's the merch store. Gotta, gotta point out the merch store. We've got metal prints, and we're putting new prints in the store, and we've got some really awesome ones. We just put a new one from Mary in there. Uh, a really amazing sunrise. You can see it there, the Out of This World print. It's a metal print. It mounts on the wall using magnets. Uh, it's, they're, they're super cool. I've seen them with my own two eyes. They're absolutely gorgeous. Um, we've got a whole bunch of cool stuff in the store. We talked about the lightning towers earlier, the four towers. We've got brand new four towers merch. Um, sure enough, there is four towers mm -hmm. merch. If you guys meme something hard enough, we will make a shirt out of it. Rest assured. So there you go. Um, seriously, thank you to everybody for watching and joining in on these streams. And thank you to everybody that chooses to buy some of our merch. The Membership program is huge. The super chats are huge. Even just watching and hitting like and telling your friends about us, that's all huge. Um, but if you want to do something that helps us out and get something physical in return of your choice, check out the merch store, please. We would really appreciate it. And we'll continue to make cool and new merch for you guys to consume. Um, definitely want to please the masses. And look, Ventar is still going. It's like whenever I... Oh, ULA, why? Uh, whenever I make a, a second <laughs> stage in Kerbal and the engine is way underpowered, but it's really efficient, and I'm like impatiently trying to get something done, I'm like, man, this, what, this is going to be an eight minute burn. I don't have time for that, but it's kind of how I feel about how, about Centaur. Like it, it takes it does some long burns because it's relatively low thrust to weight, but boy, is it efficient, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. Thomas, are you are you Just... back on comms? Yeah, I've just I've been waiting patiently, but uh, back back uh, just a beautiful launch and uh, back looking at our, our good friend Doss's favorite view. Now we got the empty launch pad, mm -hmm. um, but it was a it was a gorgeous liftoff and a awesome sound as well. It was great. Indeed, I mean that looked like an absolutely beautiful launch. Uh, Julia, how how was that? How how did you enjoy that one? I enjoyed that one a lot. And I think you're going to get a bunch of pictures from me that are, are really pretty. Clouds, clouds are really pretty right now up there. I wish Excellent. I could Thomas pan it up. Yeah, if y'all aren't following Julia and Thomas and Steven on Twitter, or just the NASA Spaceflight main, because it'll be retweeting stuff, um, definitely be, be following those people, because they're all going to produce some really cool imagery from tonight or this morning. I haven't slept yet, can you tell? Uh, from this morning's launch. So definitely going to look forward to seeing those. Um, yeah, I mean, we've got an empty launch pad. We've got a Centaur and a payload on its way into orbit. What say you guys? How about we answer a couple more questions before we call it a day, night, morning, whatever? Yeah, just sure. we, do we have time for like a couple here? Cool. Yeah, if you guys start getting shoot out of there, just say the word. Um, we can always hop on over to Fleet Cam. Shout out to Fleet Cam, our 24-7 live stream of Port Canaveral. <laughs> uh Bum, 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 bum. Joshua is asking about Atlas V's fuel. Does it use the same fuel as SpaceX Falcon 5? <laughs> I think they well, the might, be bit, uses, might be a little the bit The booster uses the same one. It's, it's kerosene. But the center upper stage uses hydrogen as its fuel. Yeah, the fun, the fun fact I like about that is, uh, whereas on Falcon 9, the kerosene is, is sub-chilled and, and loaded on sort of at the same time right before launch. Uh, with with the atlas they just load the kerosene on what is it days beforehand and then the kerosene just kind of sits there because it's mm -hmm. relatively well i don't know if i should call kerosene inert but uh yeah, it's, it's relatively it's, stable stable is the word you thank you use. yeah but yeah it's not inert yeah but they actually load the kerosene it's one of the first things they do right after rollout so they rolled out on tuesday morning and one of the very first things they did was load the kerosene and on missions where they need a wet dress rehearsal before launch they will load the kerosene for the wet dress rehearsal and then when they're done the test, they'll unload everything except the kerosene, and they'll actually roll the rocket back for payload integration with the kerosene still on board, and they'll just keep the kerosene the entire time until launch. Yep, I, yeah. I, I find that, uh, I don't know, it's an interesting. It's interesting to see how each, each company does its, does its own thing. Um, 
John is asking, what's the science behind the mounting of the asymmetric or the asymmetrical mounting of the boosters? I mean, I, I'm I'm not I'm not a science astronomer, but I think it's just a matter of the the RD180 has enough gimbal to to offset any asymmetrical thrust issues. I mean, uh, someone smarter than me go. It's the other way around. So the the asymmetric the asymmetric thing is there, and then the RD180 can actually compensate for that. And the reason it is asymmetric is because the liquid oxygen fuel uh, transfer line to the engines, it's on the outside of the booster. It's not on the inside. Falcon 9, for example, you don't see any tubes going on the outside of the of the rocket. Here, you can actually see there's like, obviously on, on close-ups, uh, you can actually see the, the tube going out into the engine section, and that's what it is for. It's to provide liquid oxygen to the engines. Vulcan, will have it on the inside. So it, it will have it will not have that issue. And we'll be able to have six SRBs instead of five as maximum amount. I said it before, I'll say it again, and I'm sure I'll say it many more times. I cannot wait for Vulcan. But here, <laughs> the Centaur engine should be getting close to shutting down for the first time. It will burn two more times after this burn. And there and we go. There we go. Cool. So now they'll enter into a coast phase and uh, they will, like I said, burn the Centaur engine two more times and, uh, and, and continue raising up that orbit into its final before they uh, release the payload. But it'll be a while, so we're not going to see payload deploy today. Um, or at least we won't see payload deploy on this stream. Uh, let's see here. I mean, I think that's about it for questions. I, I think with that, we will let y'all go and go about your days or night or whatever time it is for you around the world. But yeah, thanks for watching. Thank you to everybody that was on the stream today. Alex, Julia, well, Stephen was out there, but not on the stream. And Thomas, and oh my gosh, there goes, is this another cruise ship? They keep coming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're going to make like this ship and get out of the way. So everybody have a great day. And we will see you in like 12 hours for the, the Falcon 9 launch. We've got a double header today. So have a great day. We'll see you on the next one. Yikes. You bet. Incur. We don't need any more of these.